like to call the regular meeting for the Jacksonville Planning Advisory Board to order. At this time, we'll be led by the Pledge of Allegiance by Jim Dorn and the invocation by Al Keyes. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for this day and thank you for the opportunity once again to come and to uh, participate in the business of the city. Give us wisdom, O oh Lord, as, as we make uh, decisions this evening. Uh, Lord, be with us and uh, Lord, we pray also for the individuals that are here this evening to uh, partake as, as the audience and perhaps uh, with some input. Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you that we have the freedom to do that. And Lord, thank you also for the veterans that have served so boldly and so bravely for our country and for the families that were left behind because they also served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 First, I'd like to make sure everyone knows I'm not Dr. Lassan, so I, I will not be performing any dentistry this week, um, but um, I'm happy to step in in his place. At this time, you have the agenda in front of you, if you'll take a look at it. Does anyone have any changes? If not, then a motion to approve is in order. We have a motion approved by Jeff Dorn, second by Teresa Vanderveer. Any discussion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. Motion passes. Uh, you have the minutes from the October 9th meeting in front of you. You'll take a look at those to see if we need to make any changes. Hearing none, of motions in order. Motion to approve by Jim Dorn. Second. Second by Steve Forney. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Motion passes. City Council update. I think we've got Ryan to give our update. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Unfortunately, Councilman Warden was not able to join us this evening. Send his well wishes, or send him well wishes. And um, the report was there was no report. Uh, as you may <laughs> may recall, we had a workshop item with the planning board last month, and um, based on that, you've got one of those items on here tonight. And both of these items will be going to City Council in November. So. We will have a report in December, provided that we have a meeting in December. That's all that I have. Thank you very much. I'd also like to uh, congratulate Mr. Warden and Mr. Thomas for their reelection, and also uh, our new member who will be sworn in when? Meets at 7 o'clock, I believe it's 7 o'clock, on December 5th, so the first Tuesday of the month, or is it the 2nd? Is that Mr. Jackson? No, it's the 5th. Mr. Br uh, Councilman-elect Brian Jackson, I believe is Ward 1, Good. will be sworn in along with the two other members that were elected. They will have a swearing ceremony, I believe. Thank you very much. There being no old business, we'll go right to new business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to All right. So agenda item A before you is uh, 93 Henderson Drive, uh, Brookwood Baptist Church. This is a rezoning petition. Um, if they'll go to the next slide for me. Uh, you notice a vicinity map on 93 Henderson Drive. This is a request to rezone from residential single family seven to conditional office and institutional uh, for again for the Brookwood Baptist Church. Uh, next slide, please. The request is for seven parcels of land totaling 5.92 acres. You'll notice the aerial photography on the screen before you uh, showing the site highlighted in the bordered black 
parcels. Next slide, please. Again, this property is zoned residential single family seven in this zoning district, religious institutions, or in this case, church, it is not an allowed use by right. It is only permitted by special use. You'll notice that the surrounding properties across Clyde Drive, Doris Avenue, Carmen, and those on um, further into the Northwoods area are um, zoned RSF7 and used for single family residential uses. Um, the properties ac directly across Henderson Drive are zoned office and institutional and used for various office and service type uses. Brookwood Baptist Church at, on October 9th had a neighborhood meeting where they extended an offer to a broader range of uh, adjacent property owners than our normal notices go out to and invited them to a neighborhood meeting that they held at the church where they could discuss the reasons why they were pursuing the zoning, the rezoning. <clears throat> uh, staff was in attendance. Um, while we didn't have any formal presentations, uh, we heard the concerns and felt that the meeting went well and that they were able to work some issues out. Uh, before you on the map is the Camelanius plan, and you'll notice that all but one of the parcels identified, six of the seven, are identified as institutional by the Camelanius plan. And if you'll move to the next slide, please. This is what the project would look like if rezoned uh, with our zoning maps. This is a conditional rezoning, and as such, the applicant, Brookwood Baptist Church, has submitted their own conditions, which is required by the UDO. Those conditions can be found as attachment J of your agenda. There is one slight correction since the time of the agendas went out. They have also taken family care homes and moved them to the not permitted. So they would not be, if this request was approved next week by city council, uh, as it is, the under the use category group living, the family care homes have been moved to not permitted. So they would like that removed from their conditions to a not permitted use. <clears throat> Next slide, please. You'll notice before you, I've uh, listed the proposed conditions and those before you on the screen are those uses that they would want permitted as they are in the O and I. Uh, again, in uh, attachment J, we'll also list the not permitted. Staff is recommending that the Planning Advisory Board recommend to City Council approval of this rezoning request, mm -hmm. accepting the evaluation found in the staff report for findings of fact A through G, through J being found in the affirmative, that the rezoning advances the public interest by making an existing non-conforming use, the Brookwood Baptist Church, a conforming use and more closely aligning the zoning with the future land use map, which is, identifies the parcels as office institutional. Parker and Associates the, uh, is representing Brookwood Baptist Church. However, the pastor is here as well. Um, I would like to take this time to remind the board that this is not a formal public hearing, but there may be folks from the general public that want to address the board. It is your, up to you to allow those folks to speak, but you are welcome to do so. Um, but Parker and Associates, um, representatives of the church and staff would be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, Jeremy. Yes, sir. Um, Ryan, is this the time when we can allow people to speak? Uh, if, if you don't mind. Uh, before we allow someone to come up and speak, uh, they must be acknowledged by the chairman, which I'll certainly do. Uh, the first thing we'd like for you to do if you come to the podium is give us your name and address for the record. Uh, you'll have a maximum of three minutes to speak. Um, and speakers, of course, should be courteous in their language and presentation. And uh, then once we have heard everybody, then we have some questions that we may want to ask. And if we ask the questions, that may inquire, require some additional conversation between somebody that may have sp spoken. So at this time, is there anybody like to come up and address the board? Okay. 
Do you have any questions? I, I, I have. The only thing we do is change it from residential to office. Correct. Okay. Um, I do have a question. Uh, under recreation and entertainment, where we've got athletic field or court, is that with or without lights, or does not matter? I know we have Jacksonville High School there. This does not make a difference with athletic fields. Um, there is special standards for athletic fields for lighting, but there's no discerning difference use for athletic field with or without lights in the ordinance. And the lighting section, I believe there's an exception for... There, there is there's an exception to athletic fields. It's basically the two height. Typically, our maximum in a in um, commercial districts, uh, maximum lighting height is 30 feet. But I believe the ordinance grants um, the fields a higher than normal. That's my only question. Any other questions? I'll remind you that if you make a motion to approve, uh, you should please make reference to the. Uh, permitted, non permitted. She has a motion to approve. Based on findings of fact. On findings, right. What is it? A through A through J. Yeah. A through J. Including the amended attachment J. That should have everything, yes, sir. Okay. You got that, Ryan? Second the motion. Uh, we got Suzanne. Oh. Suzanne first. She was close. Hard of hearing. That's okay. No, she she was ready. So we have a motion to a, approve uh, based upon findings fact A through J, uh, including attachment J, which has been amended. Uh, any other discussion? Yes, sir. There is one property that will be remain residential. That's a part of that whole plat. Uh, I would assume from the signatures that you've gotten that that's not going to be a problem with that one residential property within that whole plat. They were notified of both for the neighborhood meeting and with the um, meeting and the public hearing notice. At this time, we have not been approached that, that would be an issue. Um, generally speaking, the tax assessor's office has provided us with no information that this would affect any property values. I have a question. Uh, were there any uh, neighbors that were against this and for what reason? At the um, neighborhood meeting, there was a lot of discussion basically on the broad use of the office and institutional. Um, the original request, when it was submitted to us, was for straight office and institutional. But from that neighborhood meeting, the church decided to amend their application to the conditional so they could strike the uses that the neighborhood had identified or that they felt weren't, that, that potentially could cause issue with the neighborhood. So they removed a lot of those. That's, that's basically what came out of that neighborhood meeting. The notes of that meeting were very helpful. Thank you. I'd like to remind everybody that uh, tonight's vote is only the first step and it goes before city council regardless of how the vote goes here so whether it's a yay or nay it still goes before council and council will make the final decision there'll also be a public hearing yes, sir. that Thanks. night and so we urge you to uh, if you're listening to come out and speak your mind if you have some concerns um, I do commend Brookwood for having the neighborhood meeting this is exactly what we um, ask that groups to do that Hopefully, it can take care of some things before it gets here. Okay. Any other discussion? Hearing, no, hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed? Motion passes. Agenda item B, who's up? Media, if you can, please advance to the next slide, to the beginning of the next one. Good evening, Planning Board members, Mr. Chairman. Um, a very quick item, hopefully, for you this evening. Uh, this basically is the formal 
Unified Development Ordinance Amendment that we discussed in your October meeting. Uh, the two changes are basically a reflection of 2017 building ad hoc committee meetings where we met with local builders to talk about some um, challenges and hurdles with building residential structures here in Jacksonville. And there's two, uh, Article 5 and two sections, 511 and 514, where we had to make some changes. Um, the first one being in 511, we basically are tweaking and reducing the amount of exposed foundation that is going to be required for single family dwellings. It was 12 inches before, now it's going to go to 8 inches. So we reduced it by 4 and we clarified it a little bit. And that's, um, that was one of the items that the committee had asked and uh, we felt comfortable with making that change as they were requesting. The other items deal with some information language in the code that was already kind of contradictory with some recent uh, legislative general statute amendments. So the changes for performance guarantees as it relates to holding cash bonds for warranty purposes, we are no longer allowed to do. We have to return their money in a reasonable time after the infrastructure has been installed. So we've amended our language to reflect uh, what the state's allowing us and not allowing us to do. So we are making that change with this amendment. And we also replaced uh, with the reorganization of development services. We're eliminating the reference in these two sections as it relates to the development services director. And we're changing that to the city manager or his or her designee. And that way that regardless of reorganizations, regardless of people, um, the city manager will establish who is responsible for carrying out the, the daily operations as it relates to different pieces. And it may be that some things that um, Jeremy is delegated. It may be some things where I'm delegated. It may be things that the deputy manager is delegated to deal with. Uh, with the Unified Development Ordinance, there's a reference to the public services director throughout. So it may not be that it's best suited to be in one titled position. So we're going to make that change. So that's what we're proposing tonight in the ordinance found before you under attachment A. I will be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. And regardless of, you, as you stated a second ago, regardless of the board's recommendation to city council um, for the benefit of the public, both of these items will be placed before city council next Tuesday. That'll be November the 21st, the 21st at 7 p.m. here in the council chamber. So thought I'd throw that in there as well. And at this time, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Was there any alterations to what we uh, discussed in our workshop? It, it appears that they're exactly what we discussed. It is exactly as we discussed. Okay. We didn't. We looked at making a few tweaks here and there. Um, staff work with finance, with the finance department, because a lot of the performance guarantee and the warranty pieces, uh, they're directly involved with after the, the plat gets recorded. And um, we talked with the city attorney and finance director and staff, and we didn't make any additional changes. It's basically as we had kind of talked about last month. For these 10 items going <coughs> back to city council that's coming on, what was it, the 21st? The 21st. The only items that's going to city council as it relates to the 10 items that we shared with you is going to be this text amendment that deals with two sections. So that's two of the 10 items. So one's the foundation and one's the performance guarantee. So that's two of the 10. The other item that we're going to take is the a third item, and that's related to the building permit fees. That will also be in front of city council on the 21st. So that will leave seven other items that the engineering division and, and or public services is working on and that is basically additional changes to their documents and their standards. And they will be working on theirs until such time as they get it before the, the city council. It will not have to go before the planning board for those amendments. So after this, planning and permitting and inspections aspect is finished with the 2017 building ad hoc committee recommendations. We will be done. I had several issues. I <clears throat> on these 10 items uh, the other night I brought up at the Water and Sewer Advisory Committee. And uh, 
they you're saying will go to public services and they'll be discussed because I think they need to go back before those committees that uh, the ones that would pertain to water and sewer or one of the other committees that that's correct I believe there was some discussion about and I'm going to get the acronym wrong here there's a there's an old SWAC maybe the storm let's say the sewer the water and sewer advisory committee um, well, the first thing on our, our sheet that we were given was the facility fees for water and sewer. In other words, what the developer or somebody would have to pay for putting in water and sewer for a new resident. I felt like that was something that needed to be discussed by our committee with water and sewer and then, you know, make a recommendation to council on it. And that's, I believe that's the way that it will work. I don't want to okay. misspeak. I just know that the, the ordinance amendment and the fee schedule amendment needed for the three of the 10 items that I was directly responsible for okay. will be done tonight and next Tuesday night. That leaves seven other items that other departments are responsible for for whatever processes they have to go through. I know that there was some discussion about an old committee that um, that dealt with, I think, the rates, and I think they're talking about re-instituting um, that committee or kind of starting that back up. But that's, I won't necessarily be directly involved with that. It won't be an amendment that I have to bring. Okay. It'll go through the appropriate channels that way. Right. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> Any further discussion? If not a motion from the board would be appropriate. Approve. Second. We have a motion by Steve Forney, a second by Al Keyes, <coughs> to uh, recommend approval of the UDO text amendment found in attachment A. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Just kind of the the lingo is kind of under the action needed, just oh, for. Um, the plan consistency. Let's see part. Fine. If you're up, which one are you talking about? Uh, under okay. action needed. Okay, got it. Got it. I motion that we approve the action needed in terms of consideration of the United Development Ordinance Text Amendment. And this text amendment advances the public interest by eliminating ordinance conflicts with the North Carolina general statutes and addresses <coughs> concerns raised by the 2017 ad hoc building committee. How's that? And the same second, I'm sure. Second. Okay. Now, any other discussion? That was quite a mouthful, Steve. <laughs> Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All those opposed, like. Mm -hmm. Motion passes. Let's see, it looks like we're up to reports. Mr. King? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only thing I'd like to report tonight is uh, just a reminder that on Saturday, December the 2nd, the city will be hosting Winterfest, and then the um, flotilla will be that evening as well for the Christmas parade on the water, if you will, the Christmas flotilla that uh, I think is sponsored by the New River Rotary Club. It'll be on December 2nd. So anybody that's watching, um, two neat events. Sounds great. Any other concerns? Hearing none, a motion to approve, a uh, motion to adjourn is in order. Motion to adjourn. Motion from Ms. Vanderveer. Second. Second. Meeting is adjourned.